Today on The Breakfast, Nigerian Governors, Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit on Coalition Costs Over Withdrawal from Public Accounts. Also on The Breakfast, gunmen suspected to be Boko Haram terrorist attack a community in Hong local government area of Adamawa State, killing three and setting ablaze houses, shops among orders. And don't forget, we would also be looking through today's newspapers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning and thank you for joining us. My name is Messi Bopo. Uh, sincere apologies for starting a little bit behind shadow. But now we're here. We start off our conversation with a top trending. Now, uh, this, this one is very popular. I mean, everyone gets to talk about it. It's a very popular musician. He goes by that very popular name, uh, Portable. Now, the state magistrate court in Ifo, local government area of uh, Ogun State, had granted bail to the famous controversial singer, just as I introduced earlier on, uh, Portable. Now, he was arraigned after his arrest by the operatives of the men of the Nigerian police force. Uh, that was uh, last Friday. But there's also a clarification to that. But just before then, the uh, Zazu Corona, who's uh, known for all of those uh, words, I live in the zoo, I'm a babu, and what have you, was brought before the court on the five-count charge of assault and stealing, apparently, the public police relations officer of the command, Abim Bola Uyeyemi, parading portable uh, before journalists at the command's headquarters in Abiokuta. Uh, the singer was arrested for purportedly assaulting uh, one Mr. Emmanuel. It was also purportedly uh, reported that he assaulted police officers as well, I mean, when they had come for his arrest. Now, appearing before the court yesterday, Portable pleaded not guilty to all of the charges that were filed against him. And some of his charges read that uh, Portable did willfully uh, cause or inflict physical injury on one inspector, uh, Mushud, okay? with his elbow, which led him to bleeding and what have you. Because the case uh, is sub uh, we probably would just not delve into all of that. But it was also said that his offense were contrary and punishable under Section 4 of the Violence Against Persons and Prohibition uh, Laws of, uh, you know, our country. And uh, the charges had read in Ogun State, apparently, to, to be very precise, you know, all of these charges, uh, these laws of in the land in Ogun State. So Portable's ordeal had started a long time ago, about two Tuesdays, if you want to say, when some videos of uh, him raining crosses and physically fighting some men of the Nigerian police force had, you know, made it to the round. So yes, he was arraigned, but apparently he still will be, uh, the case has actually been adjoined to about the 26th of the 27th, where he will be allowed to, you know, defend himself. I mean, there will be trial and of course is expected, you know, to defend himself. But listening to the counsel, the defense counsel, he said that um, the, the, the crime that he committed or, you know, the case is actually very, very, uh, you know, it's a case where he can be billed and whatever. Because, I mean, keeping him and holding him uh, would also constitute a, f a violation of his fundamental human rights. And so, however, he's definitely going to, you know, come back for further hearing and the trial will continue. Well, in the meantime, he's been granted bail. We also saw a video of him yesterday talking about grace and not being disgraced and what have you. Portable is a sensation. I, I mean, the entire uh, internet and space is talking about him. Uh, he comes up with some sort of comic relief to some people. They find it that way. But because this case is actually in court, so it's really sub -judice. We have no, uh, we'll not talk further about it until you know, we get to the end of it, but fingers are crossed. Now, another one that happens, very unfortunate, it got a lot of people talking, if you haven't seen it already, it's a, a bus that crashed into a wall in Lagos State yesterday. Many people have been reportedly, were reportedly killed yesterday. Well, let's quickly see if we can run that track, if, if we do have it. Please, let's run it.
It was an unfortunate incident that happened. I mean, from that video, you could see the confusion that happened yesterday. Uh, so many people have been reportedly uh, feared dead after that bus carrying passengers from Abiyoko Taogun State to Lagos crashed in Abulegba. You know, that's uh, somewhere in Lagos. According to the report, the accident occurred in the early hours of yesterday, apparently maybe when, while we were on the air or shortly after we got off the air, uh, while people were on their way to work. Now, and according to the report, eyewitness report said that the bus driver and the passenger were having an argument and this caused the driver to lose concentration, thereby losing control of the vehicle. There's also uh, a Twitter user who was also available and there was a tweet to that effect saying that uh, she was standing by the scene of the accident and explained that she, could, she barely escaped, you know, being crushed by the bus. But see, let's, let's talk about it. So I understand the fact that every other time we're very quick to blame, uh, you know, the government for everything that we are faced with at every other time. So yes, whenever things are not going well, policies of government and what have you, including some of the accidents that we record on our roads, whether it's on the highways or you have them, you know, on our feeder roads and what have you, it's always very quick for us to begin to, you know, apportion blames to the government and say, in most cases, it's because the roads are bad and what have you. Justice, there's always a human path to every miracle. This will also, that's why it's called an accident. And most of this accident can be avoided. I think that a lot of persons who have lost their lives, if we were very careful, if we did the needful as a people, as a government, I'm sure that too many persons will still be alive. Our loved ones, friends and families will still be with us up until this point. But yes, we also get to that point where we say, hey, it's the Lord's doing. He has decided that that should happen. But in most cases, I don't really think that it's really the Lord's doing because these are things that should be within our control. Now, if you, I don't know for other states, I'm not saying that you have other states that are uh, when you probably would have lived in other states or been around and witnessed how uh, the transport sector thrives. But I can tell you for sure that a lot of persons are very aggrieved. Those who are in the transport business, especially when you uh, want to patronize, you know, the public transport system right here in Lagos. Now, some of these drivers are very paranoid. They are very angry people. They're so agitated. They're so, they're easily triggered. And well, as much as we're not making, you know, excuses for bad behavior, we also need to begin to be responsible and take, uh, you know, account for our behavior. Uh, we found out that people who patronize, I mean, you're being treated like nothing. So if you are in the transport business and every kind of business that we find ourselves in, and then you see yourself as the customer, you see yourself as, uh, you know, rendering a service, and then I'm sure that the approach would be different. But usually there's always, you know, so you find these drivers who are so angry that, you know, they can literally just stop the car on the middle of the road or the, the vehicle in the middle of the road, and then they get down, you know, they can be very fisty, they can just be violent, they're just, just very aggressive, they can get into some of this argument, they can be so hostile. And, you know, every other time, for someone like me, if I see all of that hostility, I begin to ask myself, what exactly is going on? Why are you so angry? What's going on? Can you really take a chill pill? So yes, this is a call to you know those who are in the transport sector, not necessarily, but to everyone. We need to understand that we're human beings. Before you are anything on earth, or you know, before you're anything, before you're a journalist, before you're a transporter, before you're a governor, you're human being first. And in our dealings, you know, there's really nothing that we do that is not for people and with people. So yes, in the, in the business of you trying to make a living and earn a living and survive, if you don't have the people to patronize you, there would be no business. And then you're also doing it for, for a certain set of people. For instance, you're probably trying to you know, earn a living so you can cater for your family. But so in all of that, I think that we can come to a consensus where we can act rationally and act like humans and treat ourselves with respect and have normal conversation. If someone is saying they're not paying X, Y, Z amount, it's simple. You can decide to say, OK, fine, that pricing is not, you know, for me. I could decide to, you know, just let you go. They're just I feel like, you know, there are just better ways to resolve all of these issues 
rather than to be antagonistic. This is actually a personal skill that we all need to learn. At this point in time, I don't think that we have to blame the government for all of this. Imagine that this argument was in control. Imagine that we're not so angry and agitated. Yes, it can be very frustrating, but we need to be in control of our emotions and how we act and respond to situation. I'm not sure all of that would have happened. So how do you even explain that? That's exactly what we're talking about. So as a people, as a nation, it's high time that we begin to take responsibility, become accountable for our actions and our behavior, understand that if you're in business or whatever sort of business, you have to put your best foot out. We can't, you know, antagonize those who are patronizing us for whatever reason. And then if you have differences, whatever it is, I'm sure that there's always a way to solve all of this. Now, moving away to another, I mean, the stories on the top trending are not very fantastic, but of course, it's what people are talking about. The arrest of a 17 suspect for internet fraud, uh, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, that's the EFCC, had arrested 17 suspected internet fraud stars in Makadi, the capital of Benue State. The arrest of the suspect was disclosed in a statement that was shared and items that were recovered from the suspect upon the arrest include mobile phones, ATM cards, laptops, uh, you have a Lexus RX 330 and a Toyota Camry car. They were also, uh, you know, arrested following the actionable intelligence that was, you know, gotten. I talked about these items, you know, that were recovered. Now, however, it's also been stated that this suspect have made useful statement and will be charged to court. You, you take a look at the, the picture of this who have been, I mean, they look like, uh, they're pretty young, very young. These young men would probably be in their, you know, early 20s, probably teenagers, uh, so you see you have them in their 17s, 18s, and what have you. But, you know, the big question that we ask is for every other time that we have the arrest, because this is not the first time an arrest has been made, whether it's in Benway State or it's in other parts of Nigeria, other parts of the country. It hasn't, you know, stopped the behavior. It hasn't, there's no, there's no warning. There's nothing like usually when people are punished for a certain crime or you know, apprehended for doing certain things. It should be like a deterrent. It should serve as a deterrent. So, but if, if you notice, the trend of those who are involved in internet fraud has, has been on the high. And yes, I know that if you look at the ranking, according to the reports that are made available, we probably might not be topping the chart as per, you know, the first one, uh, first three in terms of, uh, you know, internet fraud and what have you. But you can also take out the fact that it has become a culture. It's like it's a culture. It's it's become very acceptable. There are families, uh, there are parents, you know, like fathers and mothers who are baiting and encouraging these. So some of them know that their children are involved in these and it's okay. They are enjoying the proceeds of it. And so I have been asking the big question again is how come this culture is thriving? How come we still have this on the increase where a lot of persons have taken to internet fraud as a means of survival, having their friends and brothers, sisters, you know, including their fathers and what have you engaged. And do you know what this internet fraud is? Is is when you get to the space of the internet. I probably might not just give, you know, a dictionary definition, but the fact that you get on the computer or whatever device that you have enabled by the internet, and then you begin to... Uh, Take something that does not belong to you. However you do it, you know, you take from another person what is not yours. It's theft, and that's what it is. But um, it's time that we also check back. So it, it, it's, it's, it's a call. It's a clarion call. We have excused bad behavior for different reasons. Oh, he's hungry, he's poor, there's no job, and that's why you should take from another person. It's unfortunate. But we can't continue with, you know, a system where the value is, is nothing to write about. Write home about. I, prior to this time, it was, it was a culture where, as a child, you have a child, your parents would want to know how you have everything that you own you know, your source of income, how you're getting all of the gifts and whatever it is. But I really don't know if that's even still the culture, if parents are all still still asking their children how they are getting what they are getting, you know, the very expensive phones when they do not have a job, who is funding all of the lifestyle. Uh, these are conversations that we need to have. We need to go back to the drawing board. And it starts from the family. You can also cut across, you know, the different strata, the church, you know, the marks and what have you. Until then, we will constantly have a society where we we'll, you know, promote fraud and criminality. 
and then make excuses for all of this behavior. We'll take a break. That's the size and the top trending. When we return, time for us to go through the pages of a national dailies. We call it Off the Press. Please stay with us. Good morning.